Yeah, after after you guys left. I mean, before you guys before you guys left, it was there was a lot going on about the um the kind of the the FMK uh family. And Toad and I were really kind of brought into that family and made into um almost like characters in in the in the public representation of that family after you guys left that was all it was time to get rid of all of that right and that yeah. in a way that kind of um i think it demotivated a lot of people certainly the um certainly the jealousy was was an issue there was you know, it, it got to the point where Freddy was hiding. If he if he took on new female Toad Eye, he was hiding them. Jenny didn't know about it, and he was keeping them off a of camera. Um, it, it was just a lot of a lot of uh, um, strange things that that went on after you guys left. Now, were you were you expecting there to be a resolve? Like, were you expecting him to come back around and say, hey? You know, I'm sorry about all that, and let's uh, mend things up. But we just left it. Yeah, we didn't just leave. We um, we sat down, we had a conversation with him, um, and talked to him. But at that time, it was there was a disconnect. You know, it was more of like at the time we didn't even bring up the incident with the kid that happened. We had left in our terms. In separate terms, like, well, he had, what did you say? No. I mean, it was just kind of part of ways. I don't quite remember the conversation about what you said. We didn't, we didn't reiterate what had happened. It was just kind of like, we were already growing apart. At like, that point, it was yeah. just, it was, it was just like, I it think was for me point. that summer, I was already kind of distant what had happened, having have had my friends left. Um, I mean, I, I think I wanted to quit a little while before. Yeah, that. I had been Six wanting times. to leave. And I, really? I, convinced her, I convinced her to, you know, because I was still committed. But when I saw that situation, I looked at it from an outside perspective. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't make any more excuses about why this is good for me. I can find something else. Um, so after that, we just decided, after we parted ways, to look for another school. You know, like, and Freddie, you know, I don't expect an apology. His apology was that he was sorry. I saw that side of him. And you know what? That that, that, you? That, I don't think he understood why I left. Yes. I think for, you know, what he For him, thought. he understood why well, he left because I left. But no, that was not the case. You know, there came a point when that week when we really thought about it. And we were actually... Derek had offered at the time to train us. Yeah, I remember that now. Now that, now that you mention it, that was and that was more so about me because at the time I was already out the door. So that was his um, kind of like negotiation. Okay, I won't train inside, but I'll train Derek. Yeah, right. But at the same time, so our money was still we would be going to the school, and we would still be supporting that situation and what had happened. I don't know. I, I, at some point, it was just like I don't. I don't know. I, I kind of took a step back and thought about life without FMK because I think for me the reason why it was so hard to leave was because FMK became my identity. I, mean, I had a why. I had a persona. You know why? You know, I had this, this, you know, videos and all this time and effort put into it. You know, to kind of commit in my mind that I was going to see this thing through. I don't like quitting, you know, and I think that was a big thing for Freddie was out of all the people that left, you know, he always said, you know, why you're like you went to this, you know, you're you're always here, you know, like, no matter you know what is it about it, you know, and he, I think for him there was the comfort in me being there and staying committed to it all. You know, and I think as soon as when we left, it was like nothing was safe. There was no you no know, no if I could leave, then anyone can leave. Right. You know, if we could leave, then anyone can leave. Because, yeah, I mean, we've been through a lot together. We saw people come and go, but in his mind, it was like, 
wise here, you know, he's, he's committed, you know, and uh, we were very close. And again, that's what made it hard. It was just, you know, I saw him in a way like a family member, you know, when we were going to walk away from a brother, you know, and, and saying, you know, I can't, I can't do this, you know. Right. That was hard, but I still wish him well. And I still to this day, I mean, no matter all these videos out there and all this negativity, I know that that's really, that's not, he's not trying to create chaos. He's just expressing himself. And I still wish this business, you know, good fortune because I know that his kids depend on him. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, the whole, the whole thing with Derek reaching out and trying to bring some kind of, um, amicable resolve to this where you guys weren't leaving and that kind of a thing. I mean, I, I've, I'm seeing Derek doing the same thing with me today. <laughs> um, that's not a respect for Freddie. I just don't think he wants to see a big feud, a big, you know, he, he just doesn't want to hurt the business. I think that's his goal. Is he, he's the same way as, as me and Irene. Like, he thinks, you know, what if he hurt the, you know, he doesn't want it to hurt the kids, I guess. I don't know. Right. In terms of, yeah, and for the record, one of the questions, we never called the city. Can <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I just say that? Because he, if we really wanted to, the city would have maybe come like three months after because they're slow. But no, I remember that the week that had happened, Frank had called us, each of us, asking I'm if sorry, we did. Yeah. And I was like, uh, at first I thought he was calling to apologize. But no, it was calling to see if we had called the city. And that was news to me. And I told him no. I was literally like, do you want to check my call logs? Because I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> Do I even know how to report that or what I would really report you for? Yeah, I, I, I think that, I mean, obviously, there, we it's have... just karma. That's right. really what it was because the day after that's what happened. He, he, he did have another jealous um, student that was very big on having a lot of attention. And I think, you know, he suspected he might have also done it as well because he was, he was kind of. I don't know, he was just very, he needed to be at the center of attention. He got jealous of other students who were progressing faster than him. He got to a point where Freddie had to give him personal training. And uh, I think when Freddie changed the price on him or something, he got really pissed off and left. And um, so that could have been the person that did it. But yeah, that was the suspicion at the time. I had heard too. From, my, from my perspective, like, you have to understand, or he, uh, Freddie's, Freddie's probably going to watch this, so Freddie understand is, um, you know, I, everything I do, I mean, even this video, I'm trying to do my best to be objective, to not paint for in a negative light. I'm just being given the facts. And I'm, I'm not saying he's a bad teacher because if you train with him, you're going to get fit and you're going to learn self-defense techniques. But at the same time, we had issues when, I, when we were there. Um, but regardless, like calling the city and, and affecting this <laughs> business, I couldn't do that and not think about his his wonderful children. Like we, we loved this, we still love his kids. He has a beautiful family, and to do that, you have to basically not give a crap about his family and those kids and the putting food on their table. So right. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't live with myself if I if I ever did that. So, so. was that was it? I mean, from the sounds of it, it's a big factor. I mean, to me, to me, it was, to me, it was, um, in terms of like the tuition that I was paying and that kind of thing. Um, to me, I always had in mind, Freddie has, you know, five kids and he has yeah. his family and he's trying to do his thing full time and run this coon. And so the prices that I'm paying, you know, reflect that reality. And, um, I know a lot of people like have submitted, well, maybe not a lot of people, but there have been some questions about the pricing of, of, oh, uh, yeah. FMK. So, how did he come up with that? I, I don't know. I have no idea how he came up with that, with that outrageous figure. <laughs> we're not paying thousands of dollars to train a month, so... 
Right. I'm sorry, but <laughs> we were getting our money's worth, and if that was the case, no, his prices were very affordable. Um, maybe at most, oh, I don't know how much we He has had different pricing for it depends on martial the arts, for how long we've been training, for if you're doing, if you're doing fitness versus self defense versus the actual kung fu. So he just had different tiered pricing uh, at the time before the situation. He wasn't trying to rip people off. It was just more like if they're willing to pay, they'll pay. You know, they. I don't know. It, it wasn't. He wasn't a rip off um, or trying to cheat people because he gave people what they asked for. Essentially, you know. Yeah, right. he was very. He was willing, I guess, to bargain price for you to help you get fit. I mean, and affordable. So yeah. like, to, I guess his prices would range from like twenty an hour, maybe at the least. Yeah. And consider that, you know, you got like an hour of personal training. Or maybe 35 at the most. He had a lot, he had a lot of weights there and he would like, he would do fitness stuff, you know, where he would lift weights. And I mean, I was probably, you know, I, I still keep up, up with my fitness, but I mean, before my hernia surgery and me leaving, like, I, I think I was probably stronger back then because I, I did so much more than I did now. I've slowed down a lot because of my physical limitations. But, um, you know, I think there was value in that. Right. Charging. Right. Yeah, I mean, I always saw Freddie as pretty, um, pretty reasonable when it came to uh, the money side of things. Yeah. I, he, he never even asked me um, to pay any certain amount. I always just contributed what I thought was uh, appropriate, and what I thought was appropriate was a hundred dollars a month. Um, but that was always, in my mind, it was taking into consideration what he's trying to do and the circumstances and that kind of thing. You know that he's that he does have this family he needs to support, and he's on his own, starting a new business and that kind of a thing. And I expected, in the future, um, to to build up both Freddie's YouTube channel and my own to the point where, you know, the cost would be less expensive for me, um, the tuition and that kind of a thing. But, um, but I never found him unreasonable. In fact, I see even today, you know, he has, um, affiliates online that never pay him anything and it still get some of his time and some of his training and that kind of a thing or pay him very, very little. Um, so I don't find him unreasonable that way. Well, I, I want to get into the injury thing. Do you think we could take like a couple of minutes? And um, sure. All right. So we're rolling now. Okay. Yeah. Um, you were saying? Oh yeah. I was just saying that. Um, you know, I just want to leave people with the sense that, you know, the. When you see on YouTube and Freddie's expression, like if you walk through his door to train with him, you're gonna, if you're looking for basic self defense, for fitness, you know, you're gonna get, you know, and he's not this, you know, there's a lot of crazy questions out there about him. Kind of people have this impression that Freddie's like this, this, I don't know, like this angry, like not all there person, and he really isn't. It's just his online journal is, is a little bit out there. And, you know, if you meet in person, it's a little different. But, you know, I just want to leave people with... The, I just want to kind of clear the air a little bit because I think the, the online community has this really, really negative perception of Freddie. And, you know, I think that hopefully what we're doing here... To, yeah, I mean, I, I'm partially, I mean, it's partially the fault of what he's putting out there. Right. It's his fault. But at the same time... You know, I don't want to leave people with just a sense that, you know, Freddie is, um, for all intents and purposes, what you see on YouTube, you know, because, um, so hopefully we're just giving a good account of what happened and what we think. Again, we're not necessarily bashing him because, yeah. Yeah. No, I, under I understand. I mean, that's the same way I feel. I have been putting out you know, videos lately that have been um, pretty derogatory toward Freddie. Um, but, you know, in, in part that's because I, I think 
like I don't know I, th I feel like he needs to have some of that feedback too because he keeps he keeps throwing away relationships with people that are really um, sincerely like invested in trying to help him build FMK and like, I, I don't want to have certainly our discussion be trash talking. I think the way that we've been going through this this evening or this morning has um, has been very fair, and I hope that Freddie will be able to you know hear this discussion and maybe that it will help him in the future um, in his relationships with other Todai and in his in the continued development of his business like I don't want his business to fail but I would hope yeah. that um, you know that he ha gets some kind of maturity <laughs> I mean the things that he's put out on YouTube I understand that it's like his you know he's he's expressing himself very openly and revealingly and this kind of a thing and that we should just in in one sense um, understand that this is he's making public his journal and so you should suspend some of your judgment but when a guy is out there um, calling down every single other martial art and every single other martial artist and then, and then um, and then sabotaging his relations with his own, with the people that are, that have enough respect for him that they've invested in him, you know, something's got to change in him or he's going to fail. Right. Well, I agree with that. With that. And it's easy for anyone to see something that they can say, oh, that's inefficient or that's it's, uh, you know, that's technically bad, but I mean, until you actually try it and do it, there's so much behind the training that we don't see in a, in a, big, in a big deal of, of karate or of jiu-jitsu or you know, these things. So I, I don't know. I don't know if you know, he's tried these things and it was enough about them to really make a, a fair judgment. Um, but I think that, it, you know, it's almost like, it's really disrespectful to go out there and say uh, F karate and you know, F this and F that and my stuff is so much better and you should just be doing F K. It's like for people that you know have that available to them or that feels as an art in, in their mind, I mean you're you're just disrespecting their way of life because for him Martial arts is a way of life, and for other martial artists around the world who do other art, who have devoted themselves to a discipline, that's their way of life too. And when you tell a jiu-jitsu person that they're being a homo, or a body <laughs> person that your your um, your art is just a, a, a cheap copy of Chinese martial arts that karate uses Chinese fist, I mean, yeah, you can make the argument of anything. Where did Chinese martial arts come from? I mean, Shaolin, you know, monks, and, but then you can say that Chinese arts came from India because of Buddhism. Right. So, really, I mean, we, we don't know the source of true martial arts. There is no true martial arts. Martial art, to me, is just you're, you're focusing on perfecting um, the ability to defend yourself, and you're also using your body in a way that is an artful, an artful man. You know, you might say that Wushu is, or you might say that Wushu is ineffective, that it's just basically gymnastics and dancing, but in my mind, it's a beautiful art. You know, and I, I love, I love Wushu. You know, so right. we're, doing, we're so, doing Wushu now. We're doing Wushu now, you know. Uh, <laughs> Chinese Kung Fu. Um, I'll say it on camera. I love it. You know, I mean, from the day I started it to now, my body is, you know, the, the things I can do with my body now in terms of the kicks and the flips and the... We're doing cartwheels and... Yes, <laughs> and I mean, it's just, it's so rigorous. Completely different range now. <laughs> and 
when you see it, like if I, I, I see what, where Freddie's coming from, if you saw Wushu and what we're doing on camera, he's going to say, you can't really use that in the fight, though. Yeah. Those movements are exaggerated. But when you train for them and you're actually putting that huge effort into, you know, trying to do those low stances and trying to perfect that movement, it's so hard. You yeah. Know? And you learn to appreciate it and appreciate the people that do that. So he doesn't see that when you bash karate or when you bash these things and people that have worked the whole life to be able to do these things. I mean, you're, you're putting kind of a piece of so, you know. Right. Yeah, and it's it's really it doesn't it doesn't help him any to be bashing them. It doesn't serve any purpose other than maybe to like to like feed his own ego about what he's doing. Like it's 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 um I think it's really the most unfortunate aspect of his character that he spends so much time bashing other arts and other artists. And it's almost like he can't even say what FMK is, except that FMK is different than competition fighting or different than the UFC and we're having a different expression and this kind of a thing. He's so um, kind of wrapped up in the in the negative and the counter distinction that I feel like he's lost in a way what his own vision is. He, he's just so invested in I'm not this, I'm not that and everything else is bad um, it's unfortunate like myself I know you guys can't see it because we have the video turned off but the whole time we've been talking one of my birds has been flying back and forth across the room yeah I saw it in the beginning <laughs> land, landing on different perches um, and you know what I what I see him doing is is really like it's training, it's martial arts. He's pra practicing evasion, this kind of a thing, and he's he's getting a workout. I think it's very you know like in terms of the origin of martial art, it goes way back before human beings. <laughs> the the animals do it. My bird's doing it right now. Um, so I think it's it's useless to to be arguing about. It, you know, the nationalistic thing about martial arts coming from China or wherever it comes from. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's unfortunate that Freddie allowed himself to get wrapped, so wrapped up in that because originally his videos weren't about that, you know. They, they weren't about what you're hating on. They were about, you know, this is this is something good and beneficial this is healthy this is healthy and uh it wasn't so focused on the on the negative and on trying to shoot other people down to to lift yourself 